Welcome to the shop. Um, in the last video, we put together this uh, blade for a Damascus roughing gouge. Uh, you can jump back to that video if you want to see how this was made, but this is basically ready to go into the handle. Um, we'll get the end squared up, we'll get it sharpened, uh, we'll epoxy it into our handle once that's ready to go, and the only thing left to do after that is take it for a test drive. Let's get going. I've got my chunk of canary wood here. I'm going to start to uh, rough it out to round and then we will work on a profile. Getting close. I'll bring my speed up a little. All right, that should be good on making it round here. I'm um, gonna make some reference marks. We want to prep a spot for our ferrule. Um, probably bring that in just just short of the copper. Right here I'm gonna have be the uh, largest part of the handle swell. And the skinniest part there and we'll flare out this section at the end just for a little grip So I want to sneak up on the inner diameter of the uh, copper pipe here. Oops, not the camera. Um, getting pretty close, but I'll get a little closer and then we'll start measuring. So I've got a set of calipers locked to my inner diameter and we'll, uh, we'll use that as our reference. about an eighth left to go. but we're going to probably epoxy or super glue that in there. So that should be good right where we've got it. Let's work on the uh, body of the handle.
All right, really starting to like the rough shape here. Um, gonna take it off the lathe for a second and put my uh, uh, put my ferrule on the end, get that glued into place. Um, and then we'll probably do just a little bit of refining and move on to sanding. Back in the lathe, we've added our, our ferrule to the end here. Um, just gonna clean up this shoulder here where it meets the copper and uh, get to sanding after that. Okay, I'm going to start off with some 80 grit. had to step away and put a mask on. Now on these coarser grits, I definitely like to sand laterally. Um, it's not necessary, but it ends in a nicer result. Um, all right, we're gonna run through the grits here. We'll probably fade to the next step, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it up from 80 to 120 and all the way up to 600 grit, and then we'll put some finish on it. Well, this is looking all right. Um, not super happy with the way my transition turned out here. That could have been a little bit better, but the uh, copper and the wood sand unevenly, so I got a little deeper than I'd like right at the edge there, but it's a tool handle. Um, we're gonna put some finish on it. It'll probably cover that up and uh, regardless of the little imperfection, it's looking great. So I'm going to wipe it with a little denatured alcohol, uh, just get the rest of the dust out before we apply the walnut oil to it. Gonna let that spin for a little bit, let the walnut oil dry. Um, probably have to do that a couple more times and on and off over the life of the tool, but uh, this is looking great. So now that we've got the handle all shaped, um, first coat of oil is on there, the copper is all polished, the wood should all be ready to go. I've got a pilot hole in the end here and we're gonna work work on that and make sure that the rough and gouge blade and the tang can actually slide in there so we can epoxy it. Um, the hole is not currently tapered. I'm going to work on this with a die grinder and get it ready so that our tang can slide in and there's some room for epoxy and we'll get it all glued in.
Okay, uh, with the die grinder and a little bit off camera there with the drill, um, I've got this where, where I like it. It looks straight. Um, the reason I left this copper proud of the handle is we're gonna fill that up with epoxy, uh, maybe dye it black or red, something like that, but just give it a little, little flash at the front there. Um, so I'm gonna move back to the workbench, uh, get the epoxy out and get ready to add the glue. Okay, uh, I've preheated the epoxy, just set it on top of the toaster oven I use for, uh, for tempering, and I warmed up this metal plate a little bit too so that uh, the epoxy doesn't just get too gummy and make it impossible to put onto the handle. Um, I'm going to get this mixed up. I'm going to use some sapphire blue pigment, um, mix that in with the epoxy, and that should just make for a, a nice color here. I've also covered the handle in tape and um, some shop towels just to keep the epoxy off of it, any drips, spills, anything that's on my gloves so that we don't have to clean that up. Um, I'm going to get the glue mixed here, get the blade put in the handle, um, and then probably take this inside for about 24 hours so that it can set up. For mixing epoxy, I love to use blue tape. Um, you can put it on your bench, you can put it on any, any surface really, and get your epoxy mixed. And once it's all mixed up and you're done, you peel off the tape and uh, the mess goes with it. I'm probably going to over mix here. Um, just want to make sure I have enough to fill that recess in the top of the uh, copper ferrule on the handle. Add my sapphire. That's not going to work. Take two. All right, well, that should be plenty of the pigment. A little tough to tell what's going on on this blue tape, but I can check it against the white paper and uh, see how that's mixing. Okay, minus the minor incident spilling my pigment powder all over the place. I think the epoxy is mixed and looking good. Should be ready to go, so I'm gonna uh, start by putting some down in the handle and then I will probably roll the blade around in it as well and make sure this all gets nice and filled up. It's probably a better way to do this. All right. So I put a mark which side I want the front to be. That's right here. Got a decent amount of glue in there, but I'm gonna make sure I add a bit more. This is five minute epoxy, so I can't screw around too long here, but uh, being that it's so cold out, I should have a little bit of grace with it. bit more into the handle. All right, I think that's sufficiently flooded here. Uh, so when I take this inside, I'm going to have to keep it propped up. Um, make sure the epoxy stays where I put it. Uh, I might hit it with the torch along the way just to make sure I can pop the butt bubbles as they come. Uh, but this should basically be ready to go in, uh, in about a day or so. And we'll sharpen the blade and, uh, and take it for a test drive.
Okay, uh, the epoxy set on the handle. Um, I was not thrilled with the sapphire blue, so I painted this black. Looks just much nicer, a little bit more understated. Uh, next few things we have to do here, um, square up the end, put a bevel on it, and then uh, we're going to torture test it a little bit on the lathe. Um, so let's move over to the grinder and get this sharpened. So one thing I didn't really think through with this project is I don't use gouges, so I don't really have a great way of sharpening them. Primarily use carbides and those we just take off and throw away. Uh, I've got something rigged up on my 2x72 grinder here that I think will work. Um, I've got a, a board clamp to the base with a couple of clamps and a sheetrock screw and an end stop out here uh, beyond the frame. I'm going to take a run at this, see if it works, put a bevel on the blade and uh, run it over to the stropping wheel to get a final polish on it. Well, that's working better than I expected. Uh, I'm gonna go up a couple grits in the belt and uh, do a second pass here. All right, a little tough to tell in the photo, but I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get it stropped, probably do that off camera, and then we will get something in the lathe and do a little bit of a torture test here. Okay, so I've got a piece of red oak in the lathe. I've got some tape on the back of my roughing gouge. Got a nice polished and sharp bevel. If anything's going to cut, this will, and yeah, so let's see what happens. Well, that's cutting nice. Cuts look clean. Let's take it all the way around. Can definitely see my inexperience with the roughing gouge.
Okay, well, overall this works awesome. The edge is not really showing any sign of wear. The cuts on the red oak are beautiful. It's, you know, almost sanding perfect here. Overall, great project. Thanks for watching, everybody.